Hi there. So you want to learn a little bit more about technical indicators and how they can help you make more informed trading decisions. Well, that's fantastic. So what we're going to go ahead and look at are some of my personal favorites. We're going to look at the simple moving average or the SMA, the MACD, which is moving average convergence divergence, the RSI or the relative strength index, and what's called the slow statistic. So what we're going to look at first is the SMA or the simple moving average, one of the most basic technical indicators out there, but yet one of the most important. And certainly in a lot of, uh, kind of financial websites and publications, people will talk about whenever not a product has broken or breached a specific moving average. So once you understand what this actually represents and what it means, it will help you a lot more in your trading and will help you more accurately pinpoint your entry points and also potentially some of your exit points as well. So first of all, let's look at the SMA and you select the SMA by selecting overlays and then going to simple SMA, which is a simple moving average. It will then come up with asking you if you want to change it from the default. As default, the moving average is set to five. I personally quite like a 21 day or period moving average and a 55 period moving average combined. Okay, and I'll explain why that's the case in just a second. So I'm personally going to change that and make that 21. And what this line kind of represents is it's drawing an average line throughout the whole chart, uh, charting package there itself. And it takes the last 21 closing prices, then draws a dot. Then it moves forward one other period, draws, a, draws another point at the last 21 days until you get this nice line that goes all the way throughout the chart action itself. If the price is trading above the moving average, then things are bullish and you're in an uptrend. If things are trading below the moving average, as they are right here, then things are more bearish or they're moving downwards. There's two ways how you can basically utilize a moving average with your trading. First of all, you might notice here that it kind of acts almost as a kind of a, a support and resistance line as it moves along here. Let's find some nice examples. So along here, you have actually see the moving average and it's working as a kind of a support level. When it drops down to the moving average, buyers then come back in and the price then gets propped up. And then as you can see here, you've got evidence that there is resistance, which is the opposite. So when the price has been increasing, it then stops like it hits a ceiling and then people start selling off. And it's a very, very useful um, tool to utilize. It helps you identify are you in an uptrend and also it helps you identify if things have then suddenly changed. For example, when we break above the uh, moving average right here, as you can see then there is quite a big upswing up higher in price. And that's something that you guys at home can take advantage of. What many traders like to do as well is you like to operate a dual moving average crossover. And by that, we're adding two moving averages onto the price, uh, price chart at the same time. It's very, very easy to go ahead and do that. You just simply click SMA again, and I'm just gonna change this to a 55 period moving average. So what we've actually got here as a short-term moving average and a long-term moving average on the screen there combined. And there's actually buying and selling signals generated by this. Basically, you've got the short-term moving average crossing the longer-term moving average, and that's actually your buying signal. And then you can see the price action increases quite substantially after that. And then we've got an example of a selling signal right here, where you can see that the um, short-term moving average has crossed the longer-term moving average. And then as you can see that the price has in fact dropped down in value there quite substantially. So there's quite some interesting techniques you can utilize. You can either use the moving average as a support or resistance, and you can uh, either trade it in that particular direction, or you can wait until it closes or breaks the moving average and utilize that as a trading uh, engine there as well. So if it closes above the moving average, that can be seen to be bullish. If it trades below the moving average, that can be seen to be bearish. Or you can add two moving averages there, and when you get the crossovers, things uh, look quite good there. So you got a if you get a, a crossover as we do right here, that's a buying signal, or a crossover over here, that is a selling signal as well. So let's go ahead and move the moving averages away from here and have a look at another one of my technical indicators that I really am a big fan of, which is the MACD, or Moving Average Convergence Divergence. And you add that on there very easily by just going to Studies and then selecting the MACD. MACD is incredibly useful. What the MACD consists of is a series of red and white ribbons, which when they actually cross over, they provide you buying and selling signals. And uh, they're very, very useful over a whole variety of different timeframes. As we can see here on the actual chart, if I just uh, go ahead and add um, a cursor on here, when we actually get these crossovers from, red, from uh, white to red, that is a selling signal. From red to white, that is a buying signal. And you can see this matches up very, very nicely. So we've got a selling signal right there. As you can see there, that was very quickly followed by a selling signal in the price action. Um, if we take this example right here, which is a buying signal, so, so the red to white, that was quickly followed by an upswing in the actual price right here. And as you can see there, it quite cleanly follows this pattern all the way throughout. And it's something you can very easily take advantage of there at home. This other part of the MACD, the bit where you've got the, the blue shading and the orange shading, is giving you an idea about the strength of the trend. If the orange part is getting bigger, that tells you the downtrend is accelerating. If the blue part is getting bigger, it's telling you the uptrend is accelerating. And when you actually see these begin to move back down to what's called the zero line, which is this level that's right here in the 
the middle where it says zero, that's giving you an early warning signal of that MACD crossover. For you guys at home, because it's an introductory video, the main element of the MACD is when you've got the white ribbon turning into red, that's a selling signal. The red ribbon turning into white, that is a buying signal. But remember, these are best utilized in conjunction with basic support and resistance principles. So the next indicator we're going to look at is called the RSI or the Relative Strength Index. So let me just go ahead and get that on there. Very, very simple to understand. It's another oscillator that appears at the bottom. And uh, basically what we've got here is we've got a 70% level, which is this blue level across the top, and we've got a 30% level, which is this orange line along the bottom. And quite simply, when it's trading above this level, that means that things are slightly overbought. When things are trading below this level, that means that things are slightly oversold. And typically, you can see there that we've got these colored sections right here to make it more uh, easy for you to identify if you're overbought or oversold. When this actually happens, when it, break, when it goes above there, that is an early warning signal that things are looking that little bit more interesting. But it's when it crosses back through the 70% level that the selling signal is actually generated. So if you look at this example right here, this is telling you right now that you're in overbought territory. And it's only when it breaks back through right here that it's actually a selling signal. And you can see, with this actual price action, it has in fact moved down in value quite quickly after here. And conversely, when we had the buying signal right here on the RSI, that was very quickly followed by an upswing in the price action like so. Dead, dead simple, dead, dead simple to understand. Anybody at home can go ahead and do it. So if we look at another technical indicator, and the last one for this video, it's called the slow statistic, and it kind of works very similar to a MACD and an RSI combined. So if I just remove the RSI from there, and we get slow statistic on there, and you can see there that we're pretty much using the default settings for these technical indicators. The only ones that I choose to play about with are the moving averages, but it depends what type of trading you're doing. But a lot of these other technical indicators, such as the MACD, the RSI, the statistics, I mainly utilize the default settings, and they're certainly the best ones for you guys at home to get to grips with. So the slow statistic works very, very similar to the MACD and RSI side combined, you've got this level here at 80% in blue and a level at 20% in orange. And when the uh, statistics are trading below that, that's telling you that things are oversold. Once again, when they're trading above the level, that means that they're overbought. But it's very important to realize that it's only once the statistic levels break back through those levels that the buying and selling signals are actually generated. And what we can actually see right here, so we're overbought right here, then the sell signal generated here, very quickly followed by a move down. And if we move to this section right here, so it's gone into oversold territory, so it told you it's slightly overdone, but it's only when it breaks back through the level there that the buying signal has been generated. And many clients and customers like to utilize the MACD and the RSI together, or the RSI and the statistics together. And um, moving, average, moving averages can obviously be utilized on top of the price charts as well. A lot of these technical indicators are incredibly useful, but don't follow them blindly. It's always best to utilize a, a combination of fundamental analysis, technical analysis, and these technical indicators there as well. But support and resistance and fundamental analysis should always be the main reason for trading. These just give you extra confidence and evidence to back up your view. And that's a quick introduction to the technical indicators.